guess that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so we want to get this party rolling. Miss Carey coming? I don't know. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm stepping in, I'm sitting in for Jeff Kahn. Uh, I'm Carrie Egan, and we're calling the uh, October 8th, 2019 meeting to order. Uh, we'll open this up to citizens' comments, please, if there are any. Yes. Hi, Lisa Lawler. Hey, Lisa. Uh, Maple Street. Um, we've had a request from the Maple Street Gulf Street residents to put a dead end sign on Gulf Street because we are a dead end and uh, we get a lot of people who think we're the entrance to the golf course and they will. They've. We had a close call on Sunday, which was unfortunate. Uh, someone was going at least 40 miles an hour. So, and kids were out, it was not, not good. So we um, were requesting a dead end street sign. And where would you like this place? On Gulf Street. In not go Gulf, because Gulf, Gulf, Gulf Avenue because is it starts the dead end. Yeah. Big tractor trailer trucks. Yeah, I saw the tractor trailer truck, that was funny. Um, where is the dead end sign for Maple Street? There is no dead end signs for anything over there. Oh, I thought there was one. No. I could have sworn. Chief, there's no dead ends anywhere. No, but I'll uh, I'll talk to Ken. Uh, <laughs> I wear it. I'll it sounds like I'll something that up. is worthwhile to get up there. If, I mean, if why not would, one too. And maybe it would deter people even trying to go down there. Yeah. The second thing is, um, since I spoke to almost everybody on our street, at when golf and Maple and Gulf Street Extension connect. There's a stop sign on the Gulf Street ex Extension if you're heading out, but there's no yield sign or stop sign on either Gulf or Maple Street. So you have, if someone's coming straight down Gulf Street and someone's coming out of Maple, there is no way to, the person coming out of Maple could hit the person going on to go, coming down golf because there's no right of way, there's no Is yield. That, there's no it just turn, yeah, but golf turns into Maple on that curve, right? Yeah. Well, the golf, golf Street extension goes straight ahead. So, so some. Oh, but it's like okay, so it's but it, it's. But you understand, as you're traveling, let's say you're traveling towards Golf Street extension on golf, just and you and there's another vehicle coming off of Maple onto golf. It'd be like any other left-hand turn that you're making. You have to yield to the oncoming traffic and the, and the vehicle that's in that, the oncoming vehicle that's coming off of Maple on the Gulf <coughs> is the right of way because it's just the rules of the road. I don't I think understand a yield that, sign is not, is not gonna, I don't think a yield sign or anything like, I mean, that's just a rule of the road. And because you have to yield to oncoming traffic. When we have young kids on the street and we have got to be watching out for people's safety, I think it's better to be more safe than less safe. What about so, children, uh, like a children sign, like that, you know? We do, but. Because I think a yield sign, I, I, honestly, I don't even know that even most people know what a yield sign even is for. Or, or a stop sign. <coughs> oh, well, that too, I'm not gonna discount that. Something that gives a little more protection. You have to remember, we are a highly populated children road and anything at all that can help. We've got kids right on that corner there that can help people pay Children better attention. Play? Maybe one of those signs? Well, then we have those. I'm just saying it's a, it, I, this is what I was told. Do you have anything to say? <coughs> My mom lives right on that corner, so no, she right. might have a comment. Coming down from Gulf Street Extension, there's all kinds of trees there. You cannot see a car if you're on Maple Street heading around the corner going down Gulf Street. If some of those people up there, they do, they drive like the dickens. And you just said there's a stop sign at Gulf Street Extension. They, they don't even see it. But they reason. aren't seeing it. That's what you're saying. Is it so because they barrel down through is, there. Is the stop sign obstructed or are they just ignoring it? Well, I think as she says, there probably ought to be if they're ignoring existing signs, additional signs are probably not going to be as effective. My question is, do we need to clear brush away from that stop sign? Yes. Does it need to yes. be upgraded? Well, the, the stop <coughs> sign, I think, is on the right, we do and need the to brush is on the left. But you can't see the cars coming down. Yeah, I mean, if they go through the stop sign in Maple, if they happen to go through the stop sign and <coughs> someone's pulling out of Maple, they won't or see Or kids us. in the road, skateboarding. Yeah, or skateboarding kids. I mean, you just it's a dangerous little thing there. And that's all I'm saying is to investigate it. That's all we're asking. Um, to do a little bit of investigating. Yes, 
Let me go out and take a look at it and, That'd be and great. see what else I can I can think. Uh, we could put up the 15 mile per hour signs, the yellow ones mm -hmm. like they have on High Street, which is obviously just a, a suggested speed limit. We can't enforce anything less than 25 under statute. But if we put up the 15 suggested uh, speed signs, perhaps that might help you as well. Another big problem is the entrance to Mount Peg is right there. So sometimes there's 20 cars there, and if they're backing out, yeah. I've looked, looked, you're not going to be able to. I know, but everybody. it's so a dangerous we'll spot. Yeah, it's just a little, you know, any help that we can have based on the fact there's so many little kids around would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, we have so many blind turning roads in our in our neighborhood. It is definitely difficult, and we as citizens definitely need to slow down and be more aware of what's going on in our neighborhood, and it we're. We're all in a rush to go no place to slow down. There's no need or avoid the back streets. We'll put some potholes on Maple Street. <laughs> no, there's one in front of my house. We already have that. <laughs> what are those bars, those bumps? What do they know? We're not doing that. Close everyone down in front sure. of my house. So well, I know that I can definitely <coughs> say that, interestingly enough, I think that that little a uh, pedestrian crossing thing in the middle of Route 4 slows people down. You watch people slow down to maneuver around it. I'm not saying that that's what we would put there, but something. Anything would help. We appreciate your input. Thank you so much, and we'll look into it. Um, okay, so any more citizens' comments? With there being none, that we can move on to request for permits. Yeah, I'll get back to that. I mean, Mr. Crow's not even here, so we can, if there are people here for the other stuff. Is that okay? Usually you just have to state the additions to and deletions. Okay, so there are additions and deletions from the posted agenda. Uh, permits for use of the sidewalk. Anybody here to speak to that from the previously known as Bentley's building. Okay, so <laughs> Great. thank you. <laughs> so there's a request for, they want to rehab the exterior of the building from top to ground level. They require some lifts and then there's some lower level rehabilitation. There's two permits. Um, so is the, this is the same exact permit that they applied for previously, and how many times have they done this? This is the third mm -hmm. one. But they were stopped the last time because um, a citizen complained and the health officer had to stop them because they didn't have the proper PPE and um, safety precautions in place for scraping paint off of the building. Oh, so they did follow through on one of the permits? They did. They oh, started, okay. they were stopped by the health officer. Okay, um, and has so that been this, <coughs> So I think they've now, this is them. They're no longer going to be scraping the building. They're actually just going to be painting over what was existing. Okay. Because they need, like, hazmat suits and it, it the, because someone complained, that they have to go through the entire protocol. So they've decided to just Encapsulate. put on a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, so do we, can we do both at once? So are they proposing to leave the lift out all day long? That's there. This is why I don't know why there's nobody here to speak to it, but I think that to let it go serves nobody any purpose because then it doesn't get done. So do we give them permission to have the lift out until 10 a.m.? Yeah, I think that, okay. and after five, yeah. until quiet hours. So from like five to 10 <coughs> and then however early in the morning, what is it? Yeah, it's like what is it, eight? Seven to, it's seven to ten. ten. Seven to ten and then five to ten. Uh, I move that we approve both of these updated permits with the inclusion of the lift being removed from the premises during the 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. hours and work only being done from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Second. Um, any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 You guys have it. 
Uh, now we can move on to requests for Sorry, permits. Parents? Yes. Yeah, sir. Can you just when when is that? Uh, those the fifteenth through the thirty first of October. Okay. Why is it a little fixed? busy right now? So soon. Yes. Okay. Great. It'll start to die. Right, but we need it done. We do need it. We need it done. Let's just get it done. Okay, so use of the green. Um, anybody here for the Village Rallies Incorporated? Vintage. Hello. Oh, vintage, vintage, yes. No, we are a village. They're a vintage. Great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you this evening? Yep. Well. I'm Amy Jenny. I'm on behalf of the Vintage Rallies and also the Woodstock Inn. Um, they would like to use the green for a concourse uh, for a car show that's open to the public on Monday, October 21st from approximately 3 to 5.30. So um, the Porsche one was obviously quite successful yes. and I think it was a lot of fun and it gathered a lot of attention. Yes. Um, the only, the one major thing that we had discussed was this has to be some sort of weather permitting. I know mm -hmm. they would like to get on to the green itself, yes. but um, Chief, it says that you were, were you consulted about this? It says something that they would have police presence. Uh, does it ring a bell? I'm sorry. <laughs> It's on the 21st of October, and it says one officer directing cars for three hours. At four. At from three to five thirty. At forty-five dollars. At forty-five per hour. They just that they would cover. That option. I have not been contacted about that. I don't know that it would be an issue, but I have not okay. heard from them. Okay. Um, well, well, so the major thing is we would like for you to be able to work with the chief and yeah. figure out <laughs> getting that done because that would be through him yes. um, and then if it's too wet we understand we're all on the same page yes. that it can't happen on the green but yes. maybe we can do something around or near or well do you have a, a weather contingent in mind um, we would do uh, for the Porsche event that was in September it was understood and I think a condition of the permit that the town had the right to say no cars on the green um, and it was all weather pending and the client understood that and they would as well um, if it was if the conditions aren't suitable for cars to be on there it there I think would what not the have chief it. actually means if I can interject is that if you couldn't be on the green where would you guys want to be I don't think they would just, they would just, would just go back and park at the end <coughs> okay. okay yeah so no rain date no, no rain date. They're only here for two days. And what time would you be, um, sorry, uh, <laughs> what time would set up? Three o'clock. Um, they'll be out uh, touring mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. and then there'll be, they would enter onto the green at the end of their drive, and then when they um, close at 5.30, they would just go back to the inn. Okay. Okay. It's a Monday. Please. So I was just going to say, because it's a Monday, three o'clock is full time, obviously. Mm -hmm. They should just know that there's a lot of cars in that yes. general vicinity happening. Absolutely, and I can uh, make them aware of that as well. Okay. Um, and we approve as presented, weather permitting. Second. Um, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, the ayes have it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, the next is a parade or event permit for the Woodstock Elementary School Parade. Anybody here to speak to that? Okay, I'm assuming that it, well, I'm not going to assume. It seems to be the same as it's been for years. It's always a really fun event, seeing those kids get out there, even the teachers get involved. It's, it's awesome. Um, uh, as long as nothing has changed and everything seems to be the same. I move we approve as submitted. Second. Oh. Um, any uh, further discussion? Is it on the 31st this year? Yes. What, what time does it start? 2.10. 2 <coughs> it ends at 2.40. Those kids move quick. It is so it, it, it is, is awesome. And adorable. Cute and adorable. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Thank you. Um, next, we move on to the police chief's report. Um, so we'll start off with the uh, meters. September of 2019, we showed a revenues of $13,087.80. Compare that to 2018, the revenues were $12,000. $450 to $4.70, <clears throat> increase of about 5% or $633 over last year. So that was a good uh, improvement overall. I also completed the paperwork that switched us over um, from First Data to AMG as our credit card processor. You Thank might you remember <laughs> I talked about, they said they can save us some money. So I'll have some numbers in the next couple months, I hope, and that will be able to just prove one way or the other. There's no contract, so if we decide to go back, we can go back. There's no penalty. Mm. Speaking of Halloween, um, we'll put the barrels out <coughs> for candy this week with your approval. Uh, they will go to Town Hall, the Police Department, or the Emergency Services Building, Max, uh, if they allow it this year, and uh, Woodstock <coughs> Elementary. And then, uh, so we'll be collecting candy donations for that. <coughs> we'll put some advertisements out for that as well. Um, I think we'll need the extra candy this year because of the, which reminds me is, I don't know if it's on your agenda, do you have the candy approval on there? It is, okay. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't see your agenda. Um, so far the foliage has gone smoothly. We've only had a few educational interactions with some of the bus drivers, making sure they know where to park. Um, the penny sale is this weekend, so come on out, win some prizes, have some fun. That's at the high school. For the Rotary Club, that benefits the Rotary Club. I've also handed out the draft proposals for the cell phone, the portable handheld device and texting ordinances. So that's just for a draft for your review. I apologize, I didn't get it into the packet in time um, for you to review it before this <coughs> meeting, but at least you'll have it now. Um, Chief, can we explain a little bit about what this does for the village or what this does for power for us to <coughs> so for enforcement? It, yep, it incorporates existing statute uh, for basically, you know, your cell phone and your texting. Uh, include, it incorporates that into our local ordinance so that we'll, we're able to enforce it locally and uh, we're able to use it as a public, as a safety tool, but also provides more benefit to the village. Thank you. Financial. <coughs> any, oh, I'm sorry. Any questions? Great. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Steve. Okay, and on to the village manager's report. Um, anything to discuss? Um, the only thing that I have is your financial statement or report that was given to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and email them to Zoe or Frank. Frank. Um, it's all pretty explanatory on there. Okay. We will definitely do that. <laughs> Nothing much weird on that at all. No. Okay, new business, Halloween in the Village. Old business. Wait, what? Old business. Oh, old business. <laughs> the Regional Energy Coordinator position revised proposal with cost to Woodstock. Does anybody? This guy right here. How you doing? Hi. So some of you weren't here the first time, so I don't know how much you want me to go over um, related to the proposal. Who are you? I am Nick Clark. Um, I am a member of the Thetford Select Board. Uh, I've been going around to seven towns trying to get them together to share an energy coordinator. Uh, this would be through Two Rivers Regional Planning um, with the idea that seven towns can do more together than they can individually apart. Um, so I don't know if you have a copy of the proposal. Great. So, yeah, the, the um, job description is, is loosely pulled from the town of Hartford's energy coordinator's job description. Um, this draft, it's pretty much the same as the first one that was presented at the back of this draft. There's um, some emails, one from the Hartford energy coordinator about the cost savings they've managed to find 
were produced for Hartford in the first year and a half, and one from a, a similar position in New Hampshire, where they're serving about a dozen towns and their experience with that. Um, other than that, from the first draft you guys saw, Two Rivers has lowered their cost estimate by about $43,000, so the portion each town would be expected to pay has dropped. Um, and so far, I've been to four towns seeking a, a budgetary commitment, and all four have said yes, and that's Stratford, Sharon, Barnard, and Pomfret have all said yes, and Norwich and Thetford, I have not been on their agenda yet, and Woodstock Select Board would be next week. Um, can, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why, if popular, um, why is Norwich so much less than Woodstock's proportionate share? So it was based off of the grand list instead of population. So the Woodstock has a larger grand list than Norwich. I don't know what that. So the grand list is the total assessed value of properties in the town. So there's more Taxes. real estate in Woodstock than in Norwich. Yes, that was. The, I am only asking it for Jeff's question. Um, well, I will say that we so we just went over the, the the revisions to the town plan, and one of the revisions to the town and village plan is to work on this energy efficiency thing and to bring us more into compliance with changes that will be made in the future at the state level and federally. This position could be someone that can focus on that instead of. I don't know, the town manager or other staff members who are already overtaxed with other tasks having to focus on that. Um, I don't know if anyone else has. And it seems to be a necessity. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, although it's not made, it's not right now, it's going to be pretty soon to, in order to be compliant, I think. One of the concerns I have is being that we're looking for a new town manager mm -hmm. um, and uh, a new manager consulting with that person once they've taken position on what we don't know what they're going to be capable of we don't even know anything because there is nobody yet that it would be nice to see how their take on how to move forward with something like this and we have so many core potential needs it seems like right which is another need to have other people with eyes on them I do think it's unlikely that a town manager would have the particular expertise that this kind of person would have. Um, uh, and I think it's a, I think it's a bang for your buck kind of situation, just because we'll have somebody who we're sharing the cost of, but it's doing the work. Because um, my understanding is that the work that's can, that can be done for one town can be sort of replicated, right? They're looking for the same sort of grants same kind of project so you're so you're so you're really getting um, uh, maximum amount of effort for your dollars I think whereas and this is an opportunity that's happening now or you know, it could not be happening later and for the audience at home you know, we're just reading here Hartford achieved a one-off savings grant of fifty nine thousand dollars and ongoing annual savings of thirty five thousand um, dollars okay. Do we need a vote? I believe we have to make, we a have to make this um, motion right here. Mm -hmm. So the I'd like to suggest portion on the front page for Woodstock, um, I believe, would be targeted at the select board. What I was sort of envisioning today, since the police department falls under you, and I guess the upcoming emergency management building, um, that a portion of Woodstock's portion that you guys might want to cover, so not the full amount, but some amount that mm -hmm. you think is reasonable, and then that would um, apply towards what the select board is asked to cover next week. Mm -hmm. Right, because this is technically a town anyway. Okay. So will we make a motion to suggest a recommendation to the select board to move forward, move forward with this? With the potential aid of the, the, tr the, the, the trustee, the village, if needed proportional because the problem is that because 
Is that what when it means? comes down to it, if it, if it seems like the village would be taxed twice if this mm -hmm. happened. So it would be the Because you'd be paying for the town side and then the village side and then you pay for the town side again. Doesn't that... Why would you... <coughs> you, you, you taxes would end up paying for that amount of money. It, the way the highway taxes used to be where you were paying a village mm -hmm. tax and a town tax on top of that. You'd be paying twice. you lived twice. in the village. Or would it just be like when we pay for... You know, a, a municipal employee, and they allocate a certain part of their hours to the town and a certain part of their hours to the village, and we pay a percentage basis. Yeah, but we're all town when it comes down to it, even though the village is a certain section of it. It seems to me that this would be a town thing. Just, I say, let the selectmen mm -hmm. Are there any make other the full towns choice that you're on working it? with that have this conundrum? A village and a town. You're the only town in the <laughs> Oh, so fun for, for us. Of so then um, I say we leave it as a town thing, and then you're only... Yeah, yeah why don't we re make a recommendation so yeah. that they move forward and hire the uh, regional energy coordinator? Through the um, town. Through the town, and that if, if they find it necessary that the village contribute to that, then we do. Then we can make a decision at that point. Right. Does that sound right to you? So yeah. you're from Thetford, but Thetford hasn't decided yet. I, so the way the agenda, the schedules for agendas line up, it's it's hard to get around to every, all seven, right um, agendas at once. So I haven't, I have been to all seven towns prior to this to gauge interest and see if those seven towns wanted to move forward, and all seven towns said yes. Um, the second round of going around to those eight bodies is the budgeting piece with the with the dollar number. So I haven't. Uh, into my own town with the dollar number yet just because of how the schedule lines up. Can I ask you a really quick question? Because I, I mean, we're talking about solar and all kinds of ways to get renewable energy. Have, do you know like which one of these is doing the best so far? The towns. In terms of tackling those goals? Right. <clears throat> I think Norwich is probably doing pretty well and I think it's because they have a very active energy committee and their town manager tries to take on as much as he can. Um, they've done a lot of building improvements to their town hall and, and LEDs and they're working on a lot of transportation programs but um, that bridge energy committee is very active but our town hall is lagging uh, in terms of those improvements. Again it's an issue of capacity. Um, Pomfret does not have an energy committee, so they're not really working on anything. Uh, Barnard has one, but again, it's a question of capacity. Um, there's, so there's people in all the towns trying to work on something. They're all sort of reaching, the volunteers are definitely reaching their limits. Uh, and town employees, they have their own job descriptions with their own duties, and um, this is typically seen as piling on something extra to what they're normally expected to do. And this is a one-year pilot prototype. So right. if it doesn't work out or it doesn't, it's not a fit, we don't There's have to. There's no way it can work it. out in one year. Right. I mean, regardless, if it does I did have one question. Who is in charge of hiring this person? So the employee would be through two rivers. Um, they would do the hiring, the administration, the payroll, the benefits. Um, from the perspective of a town, we'd essentially the towns would essentially be paying a service free a service fee, oh. um, and that employee would just sort of magically okay. appear and be available to us. So we wouldn't have to do any of that legwork or paperwork. Um, also, proposing a sub regional energy committee that would be comprised of people from all seven towns, which would um, not oversee the person in a in a personnel way, but would oversee sort of project goals, priorities, um, say the seven towns wanted to focus on, on building improvements, they could direct the coordinator to do that. So there'd be sort of project oversight. Um, so this potential committee would do that. Right. That's, so that's what's proposed that exact bylaws haven't been drafted yet. Well, a lot of the, like I said before, a lot of the work is sort of repetitive. It's, it's, it's regional based anyway. You're talking about transportation energy. It's not. It's not something that only one town. It's. It's very. It's. You know. Well, just the, the I, nature it, of the It's like her with real estate. I, you know way more of your experiences than I do. Yeah, no. It makes, it makes I do. more sense to have them be have it be regionally 
And if he's applying for grants for one, he can apply for grants right. for all. So there's oh, some that, synergies and so. I understand. <coughs> right. So um, I guess. So I move that we um, recommend that the uh, line item for a regional energy coordinator uh, is included on the proposed town budget. I'll second that. Okay, so any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, then we move on to <coughs> the Halloween in the village. Is there? Hey, me. hey uh, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> hey, Lisa. All, I am not the Grinch who stole Halloween. <laughs> so that's what I feel. It's a touchy situation. It involves children and families, and so we're we're not trying to do that. But we have an out of control situation and it is really coming to a head and all of us on the street are fearful of something really bad happening on our street child getting hurt child getting taken uh child being bitten by a dog i mean it's we counted um everyone on our street i uh, now between julie julie's mom and i we've talked to most people on maple most people on golf <clears throat> we had over 700 children last year we had people openly drinking on the street, open containers. We had people with unleashed dogs. We have um, unsupervised children. We see little kids without parents. We don't know where their parents are. We see older kids push little kids out of the way. <coughs> when we asked where people came from, we got White River, Bethel, Randolph, <coughs> Lebanon, Rutland. These people are coming into our community because we are known as the place that has Halloween streets closed off. Our lighting is poor. We have one of the lowest lit streets there is out there, Maple Street in the village. It's a disaster waiting to happen. Now we're not saying we don't want Halloween. That's, that's not what we're saying. We're saying it's, it's, it's not a good situation for the residents on our streets, the resident on golf, and the residents on high. We're prisoners in our homes for three hours. We can't get in, we can't get out. Um, I, I'm, I'm working my way here and I'm, I'm trying to think of the other. I mean, basically I'm saying what everyone on our street's saying, we, we have to do something about this. We have to either open up all the streets in Woodstock and let it go. We have to cut down hours. We have to put some kind of parameters down, but we can't continue this anymore. Something's going to happen. I mean, I'm afraid that I don't even, I go to the end of my driveway to give out candy because if some kid falls in my driveway, I'm going to get sued. I mean, you guys are, but we are. You know, we have kids in, in outfits and burning lanterns, and it's, it's becoming a, a not, it's not any good for anyone who lives on our streets anymore. It's, you know, that's why people <coughs> close their houses now, because we can't do it. And it's just become so well known out in the community that it's just not working anymore. When I, you know, when we have people driving 30, 40 minutes away to come to our street, that's not a good situation. Kids are older. We don't know most of a lot of the people. And I'm sure you've been there. You see what it's like. It's a horror show. And it's not that I don't love the kids and the little kids. But I worry about the health and safety of not only the kids, but also of us residents. I have one thing to add. Being a dead end street, they go out, collect the candy, turn around, come back, collect and it again. Candy and go around again. And go around. They even change their costumes. costumes. And it's costing people, I've heard a couple that I talked to, over $100 plus what the town gives them. I mean, not everybody out there can afford that. How it's old really are the children we can't. That are coming? How, what? How old are the children? I've had adult people come yeah. and trick or treat. So, do you feel like it's a lot more older than younger? Now, I don't think it's an age issue. I don't think it's an age issue. I mean, that when the older kids come, they come in groups. And you have to watch them because they tend to push the little ones around. And the little ones usually come early. And, you know, I, I don't have any trouble with Halloween. I just feel like it's being 
forced in our neighborhood with no alternatives and is getting worse. So when I was a kid, there was no closed streets and it was awful. Yes. Me too. Um, Me too. <laughs> Uh, we would hang out on Mount Ave. We'd go by the uh, the uh, graveyard. We'd hang out over there. So I'm curious what the impetus was to closing the Before streets. Before my time, I was here when I came here. They were closing the streets. I don't know the backstory to it. I think it. they used the excuse that it was a safety issue. Don't yeah, but now it is a safety issue again. Yeah, <coughs> it's really unfair to put the burden on our streets. All really the parents have always said that too in town have said, mm -hmm. you know, we, I donate as much as I possibly can because it's just, it's, I couldn't imagine being one of those. Well, houses. I can't, I only, I only give out the candy that I get now. I don't buy any candy. Yeah. But I, mean, I don't blame you for that. Yeah, yeah. And last year, I started giving out candy at five and I was done before seven. I don't know about you, but our street was, was done at seven and we all had on hundreds of pieces of candy. And my dad misses the trick or treaters because they don't come up on them at home. I know, when I was really cool. Well, so why don't you do it no, next year? <laughs> I, think, I think we should just have it like it used to be when we were kids. Yeah. No streets closed off. Parents accompany their, their young children and assure their safety. We're not burdened financially. My elderly <coughs> parents cannot get out if they needed to. We, there's no way we could get through the street if my dad, who's 87, needed to get out. He couldn't. Not that he would. <laughs> He's going to be around for a while. <laughs> but I, I feel the burden, and I won't be able to do it very much longer if it continues the way it is. Yeah, I, I don't even want to do it this year. I've heard people say that on River Street they went out and bought candy and they had one person. I, it's a... It's a uh, a resource burden on me in terms of having to staff the traffic checkpoints I'll say that much I mean I would have <coughs> I would still have additional officers on anyways but right. I would be able to lose those checkpoints here's here's the the, the uh, rub you created something not you the prior board created this issue where now that if you take the barricades down and you open that street up people are still going to come in those same numbers and now you're introducing vehicles into these streets where these this mass of pedestrians are. I don't know that you want to do that this year anyways without some kind of educational campaign saying hey we're we're not doing this again Woodstock next year. Woodstock is, is not this year's going to be a little, I don't know, anymore. I think you approved Well it could be but you're, you're limited to the station. sidewalks we and you did. have to spread out a little bit. We did. Last meeting, we approved the radio station setting. So we're going to have a radio station <coughs> playing advertising yeah, this year, so it's going to be even better. They're giving out Richard oh, Marks no. tickets. What? They're giving out Richard Marks tickets. <laughs> Right. So we've brought even more attention <laughs> to by where the, the fire. Area. <laughs> yeah, right there at the skip. By where the ambulance of cro cross, cross and golf right there and high. Sorry, right in that area. there's a radio station. station there? WJJR, I think. Is that oh, great. So now we're even we're even more advertised. I don't know. But if, back to your well, mic. The point so is, I think this that. year. To be honest with you, I, I think we, it might be we have to too late. I think it's too late. Yep. If you had come no, a couple of months ago, it might be, would have been okay. Maybe a rollout campaign of advertising next year towards saying Woodstock is not doing, Woodstock is open we'll to, have to, to trick-or-treaters that would be village wide, again. but the, there will be the no streets year, closed down. No. We can like also that. tell every single person that comes over and over again, this is it. Well, you can still trick or treat here, but yep. you're just going to be on the sidewalk. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't and have sidewalks, but yeah. yeah. I mean, wherever. And I mean, I, it's just you know, I, I, it's just people don't they think because the road isn't is is being blocked off, they can just be and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. It's just not it's not right. Well, it becomes a party. It is a party. Oh, it's like Mardi Gras. Yeah. yeah. You, you see people drinking up and down the street. So yeah. people just hub there because oh, the yeah. cars can drive. And their home. kids, their kids go off, and they just wander off, and parents and are all the stop participating last year. No, they participated. They do. Um, they have a barbecue on the front lawn. Oh, that's what it used to be. It used to let guy people inside, but yeah. now they're not doing that anymore. Like a haunted house type. Right. Show, but with staff changes and different. Um, things going on, they decided to offer a barbecue on the lawn. We do a bar out on the lawn, which is mm -hmm. permitted. 
only on the lawn, and um, they still give out the king size candy bars. I think also a good thing to forewarn the other people in the village so that they can be prepared to, you know, have some trigger triggers that they may have not had for a number of years. Yeah. So you know, yes, next year, yes. This year, no. That's perfect. We, I don't, do you have a problem with that? I don't think anyone on our street would have a problem with that. This Anna, do you yeah. know if the guy still lives on Mountain Ave that used to have the haunted house when we were I know, that's what I was thinking of. It was so awesome. It was awesome. I don't know he doesn't he live there anymore. I don't he think doesn't? he lives there anymore, but it was so cool. That was like the highlight of the night. And he gave out full size candy bars too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was great. I used to bring my kids there at the end of it. Yeah, well, people get all weird and the, you know. We sometime. appreciate that what you guys are going through and even. I haven't lived here that long. I've only been in Woodstock for five and this area for 10. But um, we've even seen the increase in the amount of people who are showing up only in the past five years that it's been significant. We always show up like right at 5.30 when it's time to start. Our kids are much younger, so we don't wanna be around later. So we don't even see what happens after dark when we're already heading home. They start at three o'clock. Yeah, we see them early. No, right, but the, you know. We close the streets at five. Right, right. And that's when it's supposed to begin. We open them up around eight, yeah. Depending on the crowd, so it's usually been around eight. They've been out by then. Yes, Beth. I, well, I, I'm just wondering, do you park an ambulance or anything like yep. right there's at a, Cross Street or wherever? There's an ambulance right staged there. right at uh, right Court and Cross. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the fire department and the ambulance and the police, we have our, our little booths and we hand out our own candy and Power our own books and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And they're parked so that if they had to go down um, Court Street, they could, mm -hmm. if they had to take someone. I'd like to know, know how is this? Yeah okay like for sanitation to have a thousand people on the street with no sanitation facility another problem they throw their wrappers everywhere we clean candy up for three months that would be but i don't think that's what you're talking uh, about right, yeah. right. It, i mean that's one yeah. part can but we have some barrels put out well, there are barrels but you could do more mm -hmm. so about four we're going to <laughs> We don't want to try. I don't know if I've ever noticed them. Do we, should we ask about putting the extra bar barrels out for Ken for that? Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. That and, would be wonderful. And Thank Chief, you. do we have any, like, what? This is such a shot in the dark, but spotlights? I mean, nobody really wants more light when it's supposed to be getting dark when you can experience Halloween, but do we have anything to... The fire department light. I don't know. I don't have any as a police department. The fire department has seat lights mm -hmm. that they, they, would, uh, they could use if you were looking for more light. That'd be great. I mean, it's so dark. I could ask so Chief dark. Green if, if he's got something available. We use something for the Special Olympics over on Court Street. Yeah, that was, special lights. that was from the fire department. Okay, so I move that we um, maintain the closure of High Street, Maple Street, and Golf Ave. I don't know if this is, is this redundant to what, or are we just, We've already we approved all this? This, this no. is just a discussion about. But then we plan for the, next. Yeah, I don't think we plan motion, for. Right? You might want no. to just put it on your tickle file for it to put on the agenda mm -hmm. down the road. Tickle file. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a good idea, but too, if the the police are there, they can start telling people too. And if someone can make the radio station aware, if someone makes a concerted effort, I'm not sure who would do that to say this is, you know, yeah, the last. Yeah, Well, since we have a radio station there. Yeah. Yeah, but who Perhaps would, who even would, on the chamber website or something like that, it could say that for next year that I would suspect stop no it. one will remember when next year rolls around. I, I think you'll have to do it's your it's informational no, campaign. Just, Late, yeah. Closer to next July or August. Yeah. 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 Will you guys August. come back in August and help us out with that? Yes. Right, and this also helps happy to, to help people to understand you got to show up to meetings. We only beg you guys to show up to meetings because it, it seems to be that when it affects people, it's actually too late because you didn't know it was going to happen. Meetings are one day for a couple of hours a month. It's not a lot to ask people to come to a meeting. 
well, and just to know what's going on. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Thank, Thank you guys so much for being here. I want yes. to say one more thing for this year. Is, it called? Is there anything you can put out a couple more sheriffs or whatever to keep? I'll, add, I'll try to add a couple options. So they'll go up and down the street a little bit? Yeah. Right. We can deputize you. Pardon? We can deputize you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let her have a gun. <laughs> I'd shoot her. Great. Yes. No, just a taser. <laughs> Where are you from, Corey? <laughs> Okay. But that might um, stop. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, thank you very you much. For expressing your concerns. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the interlocal contract for police protection uh, renewal. No, Halloween candy donations for High Street area. Halloween candy donations for the High Street We're area. So here is another reason to please, please donate where you see barrels. <laughs> Thank you. So that our pe good people of High Street who have dealt with Halloween for years are not having to go in their own pockets for candy when you don't have to at your own home. Please donate. Donate now. Yes. I can help you. We said it wasn't working. Let me see what I can do to help. Okay. Is there anything more in that thing for how long I have to do? Um, I don't. That's why I was making the comment. Usually, for Halloween oh, we, we make a monetary donation. You guys make a monetary donation out of your testimony. Oh. It was a five hundred dollars. It was seven hundred last year. Okay. So we would like to match last year's number of seven hundred dollars from. Our trustees fund. From the what? So trustees, trustees fund. fund. Yes, and so moved. Um, Second. I, uh, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. And do we need to formally vote <laughs> for the closure? Like <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, can I go on to the inter closure? Yes. So oh, the closure of High Street, comment, Maple Street, Gulf like Avenue to from 5 to 8. Uh, so moved. Second. Um, any more discussion? With, with anticipation that we will not do this again next year. Maybe. With anticipation that, that so we will find the it. the entire village to the trick or treaters next year. Yes. Yeah, be ready, folks. Yeah. Yep. Get your Halloween decorations ready for next year. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, interlocal contract for police protection renewal. That is your contract that you have with the town yes. for their police services. It's just a renewal. It's just a renewal. I think the percentages are, are, are staying the right? same. Yeah. Because that was the three percent we had increased yep. to now, and now it's just now it's low. Yeah. Now you're we're up at to a very you're up to right about where the numbers fall Thanks, in terms Chief. of calls for service. Uh, okay, so can I get a motion? I make to a motion accept? that we um, renew the contract as presented. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, village road and bridge standards. Mm -hmm. We need to readopt these as an error was made previously. We, circle. we need to circle something, right? Yes. It will be circled tonight. Okay, okay so can. can I get a motion? Because we've already accepted it, right? This area, we didn't circle um, it. Yeah, it's under the, the sections one through seven. Just so you guys know, it's all they're all circled. Yes. Okay. When did we look at this before? In July. So can I have a motion? Uh, I move that we readopt. Second. Any discussion? Aye. All Aye. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the Rockefeller Endowment Fund. 
So I gave you guys um, from Jeff the endowment fund and how it's doing since we changed to a different um, method. Uh, you know, I definitely want to thank Jill Davies for looking into all this. And we reinvested whoever, every, our funds, right? We correct. Yes. We, we redirected our funds. And I think when we started with the funds previously, it was at like 1.5 million. We're at to 1.8 million plus. I think it's actually definitely working considering the ups and downs of our uh, our economy lately. So thank you to everybody who was involved in that and pushed that forward to find a better way. So Jeffrey is not currently a signatory on this, on the Rockefeller Endowment Fund? And I didn't even understand why he needs to be. Well, that was going to be my next question. I can answer. So on the fund originally, I believe the only signator was um, Phil. Mm -hmm. So now we currently do not have a signator. So the proposal is to have a the chair of the trustees and the chair or a representative, either way, a representative from the trustees and one from the select board. So Jill has will be the probably the signatory. For Being that Jeff has already board. been involved with this so much, I actually have no problem with that. Then. Yeah. And I understand now why. Thank you, Beth, for your input. I move that we add Jeff as a signatory on the event. Second. Mm -hmm. uh, any other discussion? Seeing there's none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> um, okay, so other business, and we had been discussing this earlier, that... Um, and Jeff and I were definitely on the same page that all meetings associated, warn meetings associated with village business must from this day forward be recorded. It's, I think it's highly, uh, Twice. It, well, Twice. Macy does, Macy's a busy man and does not have time to show up to every single style of meeting. The problem is, is it just taking notes? A note taker is not enough to know what actually went on during those meetings. It should be done through recordings. And I think in many towns, it is standard practice to have all of them recorded. And Frank has brought to our attention that it's, it's improper procedure that we have not been doing it up till now. That is the, uh, I'm sure with you guys, it's the EDC that should be recording the, um, the, the planning commission, the, planning commission. the everyone yeah. should be. Well, we can't like dictate what every BRB. board should be re using a record, a data recorder that should will be submitted to Beth. Afterwards, she will download the recordings, and that's where will what I the say. recordings be stored? So um, I've talked to Lynn about this. So we are talking that the planning and zoning, all the boards that they have will be stored on Lynn can easily download them to a drive that we have and then it's basically it's a shared drive mm -hmm. and then it gets stored and backed up to the cloud so both myself and Lynn will have access to these so if somebody calls and says I want to listen to the recording we can pull it up and give it to them because public information um, we can send it to them, we can do whatever. Otherwise, it'll just be archived as a MP3 file or M whatever it is. Because mm -hmm. shorthand notes is definitely not enough to know exactly what happened in a meeting. I, yeah, basically, I try to summarize and get as much detail right. as possible, but you guys, you guys talk fast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Do we need a motion? Um, I don't, I think, I, I, I don't even think it's a motion I thing. I think it's an, uh, it, it's a, it's no. not even a recommendation no, at this point. No, it's a point. procedural change. Change. Okay. Mary, do you know if we need a motion or anything for this? Or is this something, this is just, it's a requirement. Yeah. Is that correct? It's not like we can vote no. I think so. it's part of the open meeting law. Right. Yeah. All meetings from this moment on need to be data recorded and turned into Beth or somebody in the office. Well, Carrie, Beth has been most recently involved with the open meeting law. So she is Beth. the one, Beth. 
So she is the one who um, you should consult. Public hearings are required to be recorded. Um, all other meetings, it is suggested by open meeting law that they be recorded um, for those purposes. And most towns around us are still recording because either they don't have somebody to take minutes or they want it for their record in case something happens or if they need to go back and look on something. Well, we're going to take the high road and say that all meetings need to be recorded. Meetings. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and that's how, that's how uh, Frank interprets the open meeting law as well. And, and so is, is Frank letting the EDC and these other boards, the Planning Commission, who is going to let them know of this requirement? And give them a recording device. Um, is there any way a mass email can go out to I anybody on the board? I believe that um, you guys should speak, one of you should speak to Frank about this and um, and move forward with it. I think it needs to come from a higher up level than, like, say, myself. Okay. I like yeah. that idea. Thank you. That's a and great I suggestion. And I with the select board as well to make sure they're on the same page of recording. I think since Jeffrey's not here, we're going to ask him to email Frank. Yeah, that's a great that idea. Sounds Jeff, like an awesome idea. <laughs> we hope your holiday is going smoothly and now you have a task. You have a task. Okay. Um, and now, is there any other business? So, pending the um, approval of the minutes, the prior minutes, would anybody like to? To adjourn. Do we need to approve the minutes? Oh, we have to approve the minutes first. Okay. You actually, I think, pretty much killed it. Uh, um, Thanks, Mary. You guys killed it. She's my, she's my proofreader. Oh, oh, there was something. Other business on. 917 joint minutes. Mm -hmm. It says on the other side of the barricade, uh oh, on line 73, on Cross Street, Mr. Con, Con suggests suggest just, that the trustees, mm -hmm. what? The, no. Huh? It, just it, it, it just it doesn't say anything. It just. I think it was in the end to be struck and I did not read. Really. So that's supposed to be taken out. Because it suggests the trustees. Yeah. Because it became. It's like a half sentence. It doesn't it, finish. It became into your motion. Okay. I think that's what happened. Is it just. It just slipped through. <laughs> Jeff told me that one. I didn't come up with it myself. Okay. I moved that we approve um, the September 10th joint meeting minutes, the September 10th meeting minutes, and the September 17th joint meeting minutes. Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to adjourn and sign expense forwards. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Macy. Thank you.